College Football Week 11 Big Game Previews. Brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six awesome sports books down there. They got the Fitz Casino, Hollywood, Samstown, First Jackpot, Horseshoe, Gold Strike. All the information that you need on all of those is over at tunicatravel.com. You can also go over to winningcureseverything.com. You can get in our picks contest there. You can also check out our picks and previews and everything else. Uh, we got awesome videos. We got podcasts. We got everything you're going to need if you're a football fan. So go check that thing out. Man, let's jump on in. Game on. number one. You ready? Yeah. We going to game day? We going to game day. Game day. Going to my team. Clemson Tigers. Minus 18. I've planted my flag in Boston. That's my pound now. Minus 18 at the Boston College Golden Eagles. That, that number has gone up since we've uh, – Is it 20 now? It was 20 right before I just started the podcast. I like that. 20. 20, 20. We right, do this so on we'll, Tuesday night. Okay. It's 20. So, Clemson minus 20. That is bonkers. I don't have the over-under. But that's okay. Saturday at 7 p.m., ABC. It's in Chestnut Hill. Whew. Uh, this may be the last chance that anybody has to, to beat, beat, to beat Clemson. Clemson. That's right. Um, I mean, maybe Before South Carolina. Like it, nah, South Carolina ain't doing it this I year. I mean, I like South Carolina a lot. I, but they, I don't they ain't beating they this Clemson. They don't have the dogs. They uh, just don't have the boys. Boston College, however, they've got the they got the quarterback. they got the running back. they got a good offensive line. they got a good defensive line. Do they have a good enough of any one of those to be able to keep this thing close? I don't know. Clemson's look like world beaters. That's and, and, and they've been wrecking, wrecking teams. But they've, but been, they've wrecking been wrecking really bad teams. Bad teams, though, yeah. man. Like, like I don't think NC State's a good football team. That's the only one that you can look at their record and say, "Well, NC State's not a bad team." I think Clemson's a good team. I think Clemson's own. Po- I'm not Clemson. Sorry, Clemson's obviously a great team. <laughs> I think Boston College is a good team. They're on par with Syracuse. Syracuse went into your house at Clemson and gave you all you wanted. Now, obviously. Kelly Bryant had just transferred. They're Trevor they're Lawrence they're goes out with an injury. They're playing the third string. It, you know, true freshman. You're right. It, like, there, there was a lot okay. going on there. But but Syracuse, like, manned up with them. That's right. Like, Offensively, it, when, Syracuse whenever, scored. They had no problem scoring on that great vaunted defense. Well, it, it, well, I mean, they only scored 23 points. But even still, like, they did score on them. We're not all Alabama but, game. We, we don't all hang 70 on everybody. With, uh, okay, agreed. 23 I'm, points is kind of a lot of points. It's it's pretty good, yeah. It's Against good. what's supposed to be the first or second best defense in the country, twenty three points a lot. And that's I wonder about Boston College. Like, will they be able to put up enough points? Like against somebody like Syracuse, even if you got your third string quarterback in, you're supposed to be able to come in and dominate that game. That's right. Like you just start handing it off, and that's what they did. Travis Etienne had over two hundred yards rushing. He had a couple touchdowns. Like that's that's what they did, but they didn't dominate it enough. That defense didn't stop them enough. What do you do here? And that like, was, was at the, home. So that was that was when everything was comfortable and everything's going your way and the weather well, was and, great. And I'll tell you this, Clemson is actually a little bit worse at home than they are on the road. Like they cover a lot of these big time spreads on the road. I think that's because of who they play on the road. I mean it yeah, it had something to do with it, but like I mean if you play the really bad teams when on they the road played and you these, play the tougher teams at home. Then when they've played these big time games on the road, they have often looked a lot better. Right? Well, it didn't look a lot better last year when they played Syracuse on the road. Well, no. Okay. Kelly Bryant or not? Yeah, Kelly Bryant got hurt in that game again. Like it, it, Syracuse has benefited from some some crazy injuries. Uh, but that was like a Thursday night game on the road, short okay. week, just blah. Like they didn't show up. I think Clemson might show up for this one. I'm not and saying it, they're not going to show up, and it terrifies me because I could totally see them coming out and like putting up 45 and giving up like 14. Oh yeah, that's that's on the table as a possibility of what could happen. But no, there's no there's no doubt on that. That's that's a possibility. It is entirely possible. I mean, it's a possibility that that Boston College plays this to a stalemate and says, "Hey, last man with the ball wins." And I could. It's in my gambling picks. It's in my gambling picks. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> you know it is. You know it's got to be in my gambling picks. All right, all right. Game number two, Mississippi State at Alabama. Now, this wouldn't look like a big game. This is not a big game. But as far as ranked matchups go, okay. They're, like Alabama's both number in the top one. 25. And, well, no, Mississippi State will be like number 13 this week. 
number 13, 14, 15, something like that. Okay. Whenever it all comes out. Uh, but they're going to be up there. I mean, they were 18 last week. With three losses? With three losses. Okay. I, but, I mean, it, I know the how rest, many teams don't have I, three I, losses? I know, that, I know that you fall, like, there's a big gap. Mississippi State's a good team. I'm not, I'm not taking anything away from Mississippi State. There's just a difference in Alabama and everybody else. And it's not close. I do agree with that. And I do wonder what close. the it mainly like obviously these previews we talk gambling, right? And so Alabama a twenty six point favorite. It's a two thirty game, it's the CBS game, Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. Twenty six seems like it might be a lot. Well, I mean, if Vegas got the number right, then yeah, some of these games that aren't good games we could talk about. Yeah. Um but twenty six, like that's about four touchdowns and since Alabama can't make extra points. You know, you gotta you gotta account for them not making two extra points. That's right. So, so you're talking four touchdowns and two missed PATs. Can State score on this Bama team? I wonder how much the LSU game took out of Alabama. I don't think it took anything out of them defensively. I don't, I don't think, think those did. defensive players worked at all. I think they worked. I think it just wasn't. We watched different games. No, no, no. I mean, they they worked because like four guys in the backfield at the snap of the ball. <laughs> I mean, that's if, if that's work, two of them came untouched because the offensive line couldn't block anybody. Yeah, I mean, that's – yeah, okay. I'm not – They did something. I obviously, mean, I, I'm I not, work at – and I, I don't do a lot at my job, but, I mean, I call it work. Obviously, sure. I'm not going to bet on this one. What would the right play be if you're looking at it from, I, from I, an unbiased I, I, the, perspective? The, the right play is Bama because I don't know that Mississippi State can score, and while Mississippi State's defensive front is real good, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. You can't it, – it's the same offense in the sense that it's what the Chiefs run, and we talk about that. Their offensive line doesn't have to – Alabama's offensive line is very good. But it doesn't have to be great because he's going to throw the ball in less than two seconds anyway. So yeah. even if the offensive line was garbage or not even there, and you just had somebody snap him the ball in shotgun, he can get it out faster than you can run through air and get to him. So yeah, it, doesn't, right. it doesn't matter how good their front four are. And their front four are going to all play on Sundays. Their front four are really good at Mississippi State. It it just does not matter. Yeah, their their secondary is not where and, their strength is. And Alabama's defense is going up against a one-dimensional offense. LSU's not a good offense. Not a good one. But we weren't one-dimensional. Mississippi State is one-dimensional. They can only run the football and – They won't do that. Yeah, they, they may not be able to do that against this Alabama front. Sadly, that's just what it's going to be. This is, to me, the most uh, exciting game of the day, game number three. Ohio State minus four at Michigan State. It's Saturday, 11 a.m. ESPN. It's in Spartan Stadium in East Lansing. Uh, I was going to tell you this in my gambling picks. Okay. Is this in yours? Nope. Okay. Um, I disagree State. with the ex most exciting game. Our, I, bo our boys from Northwestern and Iowa might have something to say about that game. That's kind of a fun game. But I like Big Ten football. I like – No, no, no. I'm, yeah. I, look, I'm totally with you on that. I just – I don't know. Iowa coming off two straight losses. You know, Northwestern's five and four. Yeah, but uh, we'll, we'll get – it's in the, the honorable the, mentions. The winner of that is going to prob probably play for the – Well, no, because Iowa has three conference losses. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so it doesn't even matter. So, I mean, that's that's what I'm saying. It's okay. uh, This one – Maybe not. I'm Ohio right. State, Michigan State. Michigan State has been playing a lot better here recently. Correct. A whole lot better. Uh, Ohio State, like, this is two teams kind of headed in different directions here. Can Mississippi State uh, – Miss, Mississippi State. Can Michigan State's defense slow down Ohio State? I mean, they slowed down Purdue. Yeah. Uh, ooh, okay. So, I mean, they held Purdue to 13 points. Uh, I think they might be able to get some turnovers here. You know, it's it's 11 a.m. And I don't trust on, Ohio State's defense at all, right? Like, we, we both kind of agree with that. Uh, we totally agree with that. Okay. We it, it, Like, Michigan State will be able to run the football. Yeah. They're not a great offensive football team, but, but like, here's, this is not here's a good a big defense or plan. So, Michigan State is somewhat like the Patriots, and, and hear me out here. Because depending on the week – like, whatever their strength is against your team, they are going to do that over and over and over. That's right? right. If they find something that works, most college coaches think, and most coaches in general, not just college coaches, they think, well, I've got to, I've got to call the whole playbook. Yeah. It, and, and you're right. And, if and Bill, Michigan if, State does If Bill says, I've got this one play and we get six yards every time we do it, 
he'll run that one play nine times. Yeah. Ten times. So, Twenty times. And, and D'Antonio D'Antonio's is, kind of – you're right. That, so, that, that's, so that's how they're similar. Okay. Um, now, it, it, the the explanation for this or the reasoning behind it, like against Purdue, they ran for like 100 yards, but they passed for like 350, right? Damn. Well, last week against Maryland, they passed for 89 yards and run for like 260 yeah, they something. they didn't have to. They, they just didn't. controlled the game. And yeah. So. And so, at this point, like, they will find what Ohio State's weakness is and completely exploit it. Well, on defense, our weakness is a lot. And that's that's the thing, right? If Michigan State can keep Ohio State's offense off the field, yep. then Smart, we got smartest, a ball game. Smartest thing to do. So, uh, so yeah, that was in my gambling picks. Go watch the college football gambling uh, picks for week number State, 11. If for them to win, which they're the better team. They're the favorite they, they've team. They've got more talent, they, for they're sure. They're far more talent. Like, they – they just need to not make mistakes on offense and come up with some defensive stops. I'll, I'll tell you this. they my, got five stars all over that defense. How the hell they can't stop anybody, I don't know. My numbers have this, and this will give you a little bit of an idea of where I'm going. My numbers have this as Ohio State minus .2. Okay. So, and Vegas has them a four-point favorite. Four point. On the road, 11 a.m., Spartan Stadium. Huh. Uh, number four. Auburn at Georgia. Georgia, a 14-and-a-half point favorite at home. Saturday, 6 p.m. ESPN, Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia. It is a night game. Georgia is feeling good about themselves, coming off of a big win in Lexington, Kentucky. Eh. Okay. Is there anything we can say about it? I mean, Auburn has looked all right the last two games. Auburn has looked way better than they have from week three to, like, Week two weeks ago, seven or eight. Yeah, you know, like it. Like in, week, in week, week nine, one, and 10, like they week good. one, two, three. Like they look like top four or five team in the country. Does the does the comeback win over A and M because they got? I mean, they were. I'm not gonna say dominated. No, they were. No, like, they were down a lot, but they they were with A and M that whole game. I think that yeah. was a good game. They they were down for most of the ball game. They finally took the lead with like two minutes left. Does that kind of propel them here? against a team that just embarrassed them in the SEC championship game, but that they embarrassed at home earlier than that. This is a rivalry game, and we will see do rivalry games really – does the schedule – does the schedule – does the record not matter? Everyone always says all these things like, doesn't matter. (laughs) Throw out the record. Throw out the record. Throw out, you know – who who's the better team on the field, whatever. This game matters, and so everybody shows up for it, yada, yada. We'll kind of see if that's the case or not with yeah. with Auburn. If now we'll Auburn say this: like if people talk about uh, Georgia, like ah, they're just not as they're not as tough on the lines. Like yeah, we'll find out because Auburn has got some good line play. Yeah, I don't know that they're not as tough on the lines. I mean, I, I think their only loss they played a team that's pretty tough defensively on the line. Yeah, and I and mean, another problem was like it, with Georgia against LSU, they did not stick to the run. Right? No, they didn't. No, they didn't at all. Like you admitted as much. Yeah. Like, why would you not hand well, it to Holyfield every time? Well, they did. Well, they, they 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 ran it with Swift a lot, and LSU had no problem tackling Swift. Yeah, Holyfield touched the ball eight times. He got eight yards every time he touched the ball. Eight times he finished sixty four yards. I just I was and it terrified. wasn't like it was one forty some no, yard run. I was and... I was terrified every time he touched the ball, and I never understood why Kirby just doesn't give him the ball more. And like I still last, don't. I still week, don't know that against Kentucky oh, last did. week. I mean, they, he handed it to both of them. That's right. They a shared bunch, it. Bunch. That's right. Ran for three hundred thirty-one yards. Swift is a great running back, but he just wasn't beating LSU. Yeah, you need um, somebody with power to do that. I am. I am curious about that. I mean, it's the Saturday night game on ESPN. I don't know that Auburn has the LSU power though. I think Swift could run all over him just like Holyfield can. I think. I think you might be right. I'm 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 excited. I'm I'm very excited to watch this game. Yeah, I'm I'm curious, and it might be over by halftime. And if it is, I'll, right. we'll flip we'll it back over to Clemson Boston find, College. Find another game. Uh, game number five. I figure you're gonna like this one. Okay, it's a Friday night game. Oh yeah, I'm gonna like this. Fresno one. State minus three at Boise State. Friday, it's nine fifteen p.m. Late game, ESPN two, Albertson Stadium in Boise, Idaho. Look, this Fresno, is gonna be a great game. This is good. It, now, this one is in my gambling picks. Yeah, no, um, I'm not betting on this one. I'm watching. But this, this will one. be a whole lot of fun to watch. Boise has not been as good as advertised. Correct. This season, they but they've only got two losses. They're seven and two. One of them was to to a, a 
a Big 12 football team on the road. Yeah. So, uh, And the other one was to San Diego State. Yeah, and San Diego State's pretty good team. Pretty good team. Um, you know, I, Fresno State has been lights out. Absolutely. Like, Jeff Tedford. But you don't think there's any coming down to earth or there's any you're now not playing a pushover from the Mountain West like you normally do. This is another big boy in your conference. Uh, I'll say this. Fresno has covered like seven straight games. Okay. They are 20-3 and three against the spread in their last 23 games. Like, it doesn't matter who it is. Okay. It it doesn't matter. Um, not to, I mean, they look, they beat Boise to end the regular season last year. And then they lost to them 17-14 to 14 in the championship game the very next week. So, technically, this would be the revenge spot, I guess. Like, Boise got revenge for the regular season loss, and then... When you it, play a whatever. team every year, it's hard to figure out. And when you're playing them twice a year, it makes it even more that's, ridiculous. That's like right. Georgia and Auburn last year. It's crazy. So, um, yeah, like, this should be very entertaining because Fresno State is... Hold on, I got my Massey Composite rankings here. Fresno is number 16 in the country in the Massey Composite. They are efficient. They are excellent. They are well coached. They got players. Uh, their quarterback, you know, is a, a transfer from Oregon State, maybe? I think that's where he's from, like McCarrion or Mc, Mc, whatever his name is. I can try to look that up before you finish. Either I, way. I, I might not be there, though. Um, no, nah, nah, you ain't going to worry about it. We'll okay. we'll get off this one pretty quick. But either way, Fresno State has got a great football team. But Boise at home, a lot of seniors on this team. I still hate, hate their coach, Brian Harson. I think he is awful. Like, he's just he, – I don't think he's a good coach. He get Because he's the Boise coach, he gets brought up for how all did, these big how openings. Did not, how did I know this? Have we not? Yeah. We haven't had this conversation I, before. Yes, we have. Early oh. in the season. Early in the season. I might have missed because that. Because we were might talking. Not, I might not have been listening. We had talked back and forth about it because I bet against them at Troy. Because I liked Neil Brown more than I liked well, yeah. Brian Harson. Well, yeah, but okay, saying you like Neil Brown more than you like. You know, no, him, but I, I, I mean, I like Neil we Brown. We can go back and watch and double check it. But, uh, and, and obviously, if you're on YouTube, you can go back and watch this too. I like, never knew I, this hatred existed. I, I, it's not. It is not a personal hatred. Okay. It is, you have got... Well, it's okay to hate it. it. I mean, I do it. In the group of five... I hate a lot of coaches. You have got the most resources of any coach in the group of five. And, I mean, it, it is a town, it is a state, it is what that worships that football program, and he cannot figure out how to, to consistently play well. Like, he can't consistently coach his players up. And, yes, I understand that that playing to a Chris Peterson level is just impossible, right? Because what he did is... That's a lot to ask. But I'm telling you, man, like this this team should be better than they are. I did I did not know that this hate existed. Oh, it's, it's there. Wow. It's real. And, I mean, you're seeing what Jeff Tedford is doing with Fresno State. And Fresno State was complete garbage when they hired him. Garbage. Yeah. Like, I, I know there are coaches better than him. It's just one thing to hate. It's, it is my hatred kind of, of his coaching ability. Oh, you can hate him. Cause like, like, it's look, okay to hate, Gary. He's, he's okay. the guy. That, all right, so Hugh Freeze goes like 11-2 and two or whatever at Arkansas State. Okay. And then Gus Malzahn comes in behind him and goes like 10-2. and two. And then Brian Harson comes in, like because this is all in a three-year span. Harson comes in for a year and goes like 7-4, and 7-5, and five, and then gets the Boise State job. It's like, what? It, like, I, how do you... Parlay that, and, and I understand Harson was a Peterson guy, and he was at Boise State, blah, 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 blah. Either way, uh, Fresno minus three at Boise. That is going to be fun See, to watch. You don't have to watch the gambling picks if you want to know where Gary's going to bet. <laughs> I will assure you of this. You should still go watch the you gambling picks. You can still picks. watch it. We'll uh, give you some other picks. Let's jump into the honorable mentions real quick. We, there's, some, there's some more interesting games. Uh, Thursday night game, Wake Forest at NC State, six thirty on about ESPN. This, game. this uh, game is in my gambling picks. Okay, okay. Well, we'll go watch the gambling picks. Yeah. Next one up, Wisconsin at Penn State. Both teams have three losses. Whoever loses this has four losses on the year. That's big. Penn State's an eight point favorite here. Uh, I just don't know what to make of Wisconsin, man. This game's in my gambling picks too. All right, Texas at Texas Tech. 
Texas is currently. I wanted to bet this one. Texas is a two point favorite at Texas Tech. Alan Bowman, British comedy legend, he is out <laughs> of this game. Uh, I don't know that he's still in the hospital, is he? I, I, I well, I don't know. Uh, who knows? Who knows? Either way, I know that he's not. Uh, yeah, all I cared about was is he playing. Thoughts are with him. Uh, yeah. I, we don't want the kid completely well, no. hurt. I no, mean, he's I a true freshman. Yeah, no. Um, no, I'm not trying to be an asshole by saying I don't. It was, once I knew hey, he's not coming back to play football right now. Yeah, no, not right he's now. He's worried about other things, and that's all I cared about. Um, so he is. He's not playing. But Texas Tech. I mean, it's a night game in Lubbock. Texas coming off a uh, home loss to West Virginia. That could be very, very interesting. I mean, we saw what Texas Tech did against Oklahoma last week, and that was with Bowman out for the entire second half. I was about to say he didn't play the entire second half. Oklahoma State at Oklahoma. We got Bedlam, Bedlam. this weekend. Bedlam. I love the Bedlam game. Bedlam is a 17-and-a-half point line for the Sooners, and it's in Norman. I I don't have a lot of faith in Gundy in this one. It's in my gambling picks. All right, I'm staying away from it. Northwestern. You can, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> Northwestern at Iowa. Is this your game of picks? No, I wanted to so bad. <laughs> I wanted to so bad. Now, I'll tell you this. I, I like both of these teams, so I stayed away from this. Iowa, I will be betting losses. on this game, but I'm not going to tell everybody else to. Uh, Northwestern. Go with my guys. Tough loss Chicago. at home. Yeah, 10 points seems like a lot. Go with my guys in Chicago. That's out. Well, since, you're not, since it's not the game of picks, Northwestern plus 10 the right play. I, I think so. I don't I don't know how Northwestern – I mean, this, I think this should be a close line. I think it should. I, like I really a, do ten. think these teams are pretty even. For, aside from my, my just strange real like of Northwestern, I think Northwestern plays kind of everybody pretty close. They don't get blown out a lot. I mean, they, no, they, they don't lost, blow anybody out. They, no, nah, they don't blow anybody out. They don't, they, please don't say that the Notre Dame lost because well, no, that that was a, a loss by ten points at home. That's but, a top but, three but team in a, the country. That's what I'm saying. I was a three loss team in the country. No, I, I think I was really good. But you got to go to Kinnick. Yeah, I think this is good. Anyway, I'll be it, betting. Yeah. I'll be betting on boys in Chicago, Evanston, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Last two: Oregon at Utah. Arizona State knocked. Uh, Knock Tyler Hundley out of the game. And he's out this week. Yeah. So Utah has to go into this game against Oregon. Still tied, like it's a four-way tie in the Pac-12 South for the lead. <laughs> so so the, Utah needs to win this game. The Pac-12 is actually really entertaining. The Pac-12 South has been a lot of fun to watch. Yes. They're not great. Like, this is not There's you're no watching great teams. a playoff team. But all of these games are a lot of fun. Well, because I, they can I all like, beat each other. That's right. I like these games. Last game, Will Muschamp heads back down to Gainesville against the Florida Gators, who gave up 38 points and got smoked by Missouri last week in Gainesville. Can Florida bounce back in this one? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out, is Florida going to, you know, the line opened be spitting at seven piss on and this. vinegar and, and, and come back firing, or are they just – with. Are they just done? Did Georgia break them? I will tell you this: it's possible. If, if Georgia broke them, and Muschamp has an opportunity to just rub it in, he will. Yeah, I think he probably. But will. I don't know that South. Look, I no one loves South Carolina, South Carolina have more the than I did before. That. They don't have the dudes, man. They're I like them a lot. I want them to be good, but they just don't have the guys. No, nah, I think uh, I think you're probably right on that. I'll be now, staying they did, away from it. They I did put up 48 on Ole Miss last week, but, yeah, but that is Ole Miss. I mean, yeah, they're not a really good defense at all. I mean, it's a Big 12 team. Yeah, it really is, isn't it? I mean, yeah. If you took Ole Miss and you, like, flipped them and gave us Iowa State, like, that's – Iowa State plays right. SEC football. No, I think I think you're probably right on that. And I think Ole Miss would probably be like a – Oh, they'd be awesome in the Big 12. They'd be like a 6-7 win team right now. Oh, yeah, no. They, they, might they be, got five they, wins right they now. might be better than that. Um, they beat Texas Tech. Yeah, no, they did. They did. Neutral side, too. Yep. Huh. Okay. Uh, that is our college football previews for week 11. That's it. We gave you everything you need to know to go be a winner down in Tunica, Mississippi. So get down there, get some action in. You want to find more information on all their sports books, go to tunicatravel.com. You can find our picks, our previews, our YouTube stuff, everything else over at winningcureseverything.com. Hit that subscribe button if you're on YouTube or on the podcast. Memphis is up 45 to 31. Let's see. Alabama's up 45 to 26 on Southern at the half.